Hello Ratbags, it's Jade. Welcome to a special survival show. Today we're taking a look at Small Land, an actual proper gameplay. Small Land devs merge games. They were actually at a PAX West interview. They showed off exclusively for the first time proper footage, proper gameplay. No trailers, no, no kind of cinematics. It's all just actual proper gameplay. And it's looking good. Got a bunch of information to go over, including inventory screens, health, and obviously the world of Small Land. If you don't know about Small Land, it's going to be a survival survival game set in a forest area and you are a small creature a small land person and you pretty much have to go and explore the world you'll be able to tame bugs like ladybugs grasshoppers fight off all sorts of creatures including spiders and base build craft gather the usual components of a survival game i've been covering its progress for a good while now and it's looking pretty good they've got an open beta or i should say a demo coming in october where you'll be able to try it for yourself on steam and they have got plans to bring it to console in the future as well. So yeah, let's go over everything we've learned through this new footage. So straight away, the customization options look pretty good. You'd be able to change your heads, your ears, your eyebrows, your beard, the antenna, the hair and the hair colors. Kind of normal bog standard stuff, but some survival games don't even go this far into it. So it's going to be completely customizable. You can be a male or female, add, change, do whatever you want. And I've got loads of different options, as you can see. So yeah, nice little touch and kind of what you expect with most games nowadays. Then we get a look at the armor sets or the character customization in the armory here. So pretty much this is where you're going to be going and tooling up, getting your different weapons. You can see there's different slots, so you'll have different slots for your head, your chest, your legs, and obviously your arms as well. And there's various different ones. You can see you've got the Royal Guard, uh, Vanguard Van Braces here, the Black Ant Van Braces. So there's lots of various different types. They've said that these armor sets are going to have uses. They're not necessarily going to be just a case of giving you an extra buff in health. We've already kind of maybe known that some of them might give you the ability to glide, judging by the looks of the wings on the back of it. And it looks like you've got two slots for weapons. Like you can see there, we've got a sword slot. There we go, the long sword. And then we've got one below it as well. So that's pretty interesting. Or is that the actual bow? Maybe that's the bow. It's just, it's not a very good picture here from where I'm looking. But then you've got obviously the axe slot and it looks like you've got another slot for equipment. So yeah, it looks pretty decent. You'll have these sets. It'll be quick and easy to flick through what you've got. No sorting through a hundred different items in one box. When you look into an equipment box like this, it'll have your headpieces all in one section your chest pieces all in one section it does look like you're going to have to learn certain aspects or complete missions for npcs to gain access to some of this stuff like if you want to learn how to maybe get the royal guard armor set you're going to have to maybe kill or do something around some of them insects to learn their ways that's how kev kind of explained it but i'm shortening it here um, in this little dev interview he did with danny from merge games that you'll reveal bits of information about creatures and then the small land NPCs will help you learn how to craft items. So you can see there's lots of stuff going on there. We've got loads of different resources, sap, birch, lizard bait, bee bait. So you are going to have to use some sort of special food item to tame some of the creatures in the game. So far from this early footage, it looks like the creatures will be tamed simply just by going up to them and feeding them the food. No sitting around for hours like in Art Survival Evolved. No taking them back to your pen in Conan Exiles. Simply make the food that they like, feed it to them, and you can go ahead and ride it. Now this grasshopper is amazing. Man, it jumps high. Like, you'll be able to get across this map super quick. Obviously, there are lots of biomes you can see in the distance and stuff. And here we've got an axe. We're going to go and chop down some of these resources. But yeah, the grasshopper looks great. I love the creature animations in this game. Um, so we're harvesting that and we're getting dyes, oils, and pollen. Okay, from the rose. So that kind of makes sense. Man, getting a lot of resources from just that one plant as well. That was like loads, easily like 20 or 30 oil, 20 or 30 pollen. Then we've got ladybugs as well. I know you can tame them, but you won't be able to ride them because they're pretty small. They'll just kind of follow you around. But yeah, look how far you can go with the grasshopper. It looks great. It looks good. The game looks pretty stable. The frame rates aren't dropping or anything, considering it's still like a month from its demo. And we don't know when it's coming out in early access. They have said 2021, but nothing else confirmed. Looks like there's a man-made tunnel there, and it looks like there's a park across the water or some sort of uh i'm definitely thinking that's a park and a massive bridge as well so there will be man-made elements in the game they've said there is something to do with why the small land people have kind of uh, merged from the underground that's what kev told me in the interview so yeah we're going to maybe have to discover where the humans are or if we do encounter any humans but there definitely will be remnants of humans and places that humans have been 
So you can see here we've got the wasps as well. The grasshoppers just literally running across them. Maybe it's not going to get itself involved. And yeah, this is definitely like a park area. Um, maybe this is another NPC. You can see Druston. So it pops up on the left as quests to go and find some of these NPCs. And they've been studying the amazing flying creatures. They're both formidable and deadly, yet only engage combat if attacked. Focus on building their hive. I've been hiding, watching them carefully. So I guess this is where you're going to have to meet one of these guys and then maybe study some of the creatures or find ways to get info from them before then possibly being able to craft their arm sets. From the in-game menu as well, we've got quests, we've got factions, and we've got log too. Now Kev obviously was answering loads of questions here and talking about stuff, so you should go and absolutely watch the whole video stream for yourself. It's on the PAX West channel. I should probably leave a link somewhere in the comment section. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I'm probably like miss saying some stuff as I did record this pretty much on the quick. As nighttime approaches, the biomes look good. Like there's a lot of foliage going around. There's a lot of stuff happening, greenery and the trees are huge. Um, some parts of it still look just a little bit, I don't know, just not as dense. Like I've played a lot of games, survival games over the years. Ark is probably the most dense. Grounded pretty does a good job of having you feel like you're really in a small garden, you know, at a small size. Conan Exiles, somewhere in between. And then you've got games like Rust, where certain resources, it's not always that dense. You know, you've got to go and get certain things and it's all populated pretty sparsely. I think Small Land looks to be a kind of middle ground between both of them sort of sets of games about how much foliage there is around. It's absolutely huge area as you can see, just massive. But these bees or wasps do come pretty close to you quickly and you can see they're attacking pretty formidably as well. So we get a taste of combat here. I'm um, doing some weird little jump and pirouette. You can look to it, harm your own creature. Doesn't look like he's going to fight for you just yet, but I did catch Kev saying that once you get to know your creature and actually have a bond with them, they will fight for you or you will get additional benefits from them. And I kind of like that idea. I like the idea that, yeah, you've got to form a bond with your creature, your pet, your tame. It's not just a case of they're going to be OP like an Ark and, and destroy any creatures nearby. It's going to have to build that up, like riding them a lot or feeding them a lot, I'm guessing, before they'll actually start thinking, you know what, yeah, you're probably worthy of me helping to defend. So taking out the wasp there, the animations look from great. It looks pretty scary, frenetic with these creatures attacking you. You definitely don't be involved in this unless you've got the right kind of weapons. Obviously, I think for the demo, they haven't got um, health on as much although it is taking down the shield you can see they've got the shield bar it's a gray one on top of the health so it does look like it's pretty generous at the moment at least anyway in terms of how much health and damage you've got seems like it does take quite a bit of time to take down some of these guys admittedly there is four of them and so trying to hit them sometimes i guess it's going to be hard when there's all four but they don't seem to be doing as massive amount of damage to you maybe it's this armor set he's wearing that it's a bit op because you know it's a, an advanced one possibly that's why he's got so much sh um, shielding I did hear these guys talking about the fact that wasps, although they are dangerous right now and you're an enemy and it's almost like a starting enemy, I think, they may become allies in the future. And I like that idea as well. Like, no creature is going to be necessarily just be a complete enemy. There are spiders in the game. It'd be amazing if you could ride a spider or you do have them as a faction uh, ally and stuff. So it does look like eventually, yeah, you will be able to have wasps as, as your friends. The bow action's pretty simple, pull it back, goes green, you're going to get a harder shot, it's on focus and stuff, but it looks like Kev's going to make a escape here to get away. Your creatures can die fairly easily, I do believe, like lots of these starting creatures, like a grasshopper, you'll find plenty of lying around from other interviews, um, that they will die, you will lose them quite often maybe, so yeah, if you want to take care of them, you're going to have to be really careful about what kind of combat scenarios you take them into, etc. Now this part of the world seems good, all sorts of foliage and we've got a big massive slide here. We've seen how it can sort of incorporate man-made elements in Grounded, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. And then we've got ladybugs, obviously again same thing, just taming them with a ladybug food and they're I think just going to follow him. Yeah, it's just like a dog and I've seen that from some of the dev previews they've shown off that ladybugs are pretty useless in this game at the moment. As Kev goes up to this NPC, he's going to learn more about baits or be able to craft a lot of different baits. So that's good as well. We get to see what the process is. These NPC characters look pretty good. I like the actual art on them. They look really involved. It's definitely got a whimsical, a little bit whimsical, a little bit of fantasy vibe to it. These guys have gone and explored the world just ahead of you. And it's up to you now to take your place amongst them as a pathfinder. So yeah, it's pretty cool. We've got quests obviously popping up as well. And yeah, we'll be able to get ourselves some brand new stuff at this workbench. So you can see we've got armor, weapons, consumables and tools. So we'll be able to craft all of that stuff at this one bench. Um, yeah, I like that. I 
you know, I think I've got used to certain games like Valheim and Conan where you have to have individual benches to craft something. And I kind of like and dislike it sometimes. It's annoying when you need to have your base filled with 20 benches, but it also means that bases become actually properly usable if you've got separate benches for stuff. Like you have to set out certain rooms and stuff like that to really make them worthwhile. So I kind of like both ways in, in, in you know different instances. But here we've got the different baits. We can see we've got dragonfly confirmed, bees, lizards, ladybugs, um, loads of creatures there that we know. We've seen a few clips of or teasers of or dev art, but we definitely know they're in the game. Now let's go over the base building stuff before we focus some more on the world itself. You can see here, nice simple system. You've got lots of different build types. You've got walls, you've got foundations, and then you just place it around. Again, simple, nice and easy. Red, you can't build. Green, you can laying down the foundations. It's quite ornate, these building tile sets. I quite like it, it's interesting compared to some other sets we've seen which are pretty bog standard. You've got the grasshoppers there, obviously following you in the background. You can ride them, you can tame them. There's gonna be lots of bugs that you can get hold of. As you would imagine, they've all got their own abilities. Looks like you can also clip into the terrain a little bit in certain instances, although not the ground. I'm guessing that may change, who knows. What's interesting is seeing the amount of resources popping up on the right hand side. We can see how much stuff costs, sap, binding, twigs and oil. That's quite a lot of components just to build one sort of wooden foundation. And you see some of them, they're not too bad, like one wooden wall costs five um, oil, I think it was there. Um, so yeah, I'm guessing we're gonna get oil from some sort of resource or, or plant, or maybe there'll be oil wells in the actual world. And then obviously sap you're gonna get, I'm sure, from trees and obviously the wood from trees and, and twigs and stuff. So typical sort of thing, going around gathering resources, building up your bases, and it does look like your bases are going to have to be pretty sturdy, um, make sure that they've just got all the components you need to craft and build yourself more items. Now Kev demolished this lot and he's here got a completed version. Don't it look great? Isn't that great with the curved roofs and just the decorations on the fence posts? I really like this build set. Obviously I'm hoping we'll see some more build sets. I'm hoping it's not just the wood and the grass because people do like a bit of variety. But I think it's a good solid start. Small Land will be hitting early access of course. So they will be adding more to the game as it progresses. And you can see we've got some nice little touches here with sort of the curved half little walls um, sails too. And you can go inside, you can see the camera's working nice as well i've played a few games lately that are kind of in development stage and the camera is awful when you go into a building so at least this is kind of working correctly it does look like you may need some actual um sort of you know ways to support a building better because it's yellow when he's looking at it maybe that just means to delete something i'm not sure but you can see it's green when he's popping it on so possibly there could be an element of like valheim where you need support although that's not confirmed just yet for these roof pieces obviously you need more leaves yeah looking at it it's pretty grindy how much you're going to need to craft and make a base like how many of these items maybe if you played ark or conan it won't seem that bad um, in getting all these resources so yeah hopefully we will be able to build bases relatively easy and then maybe go for the harder stuff for the more decorative items where you're gonna have to really get lots and lots of resources so yeah i do i don't know if that's 100 percent confirmed but to me it seems like it may possibly be determining like how high you can build if you've got stable foundations and stuff like that. Then again, it could just be the arc system where simply a foundation supports three squares in any one direction. And it's something similar to that on Conan as well. As I'm watching this, there isn't that many actual supporting beams lining up against it and stuff. And I know some people love that aspect, but actually a lot of people don't like that kind of thing in Valheim. And they feel like it just means they always have to build these Viking longhouses because they need supports all the time, unless you use some sort of mod that removes the, uh, the bad look of it. Because you can build without supports, but in Valheim, the building pieces kind of deteriorate. So yeah, that's what I'm kind of getting from this. But it's got nice little options, you can put the curves whatever way you want. And yeah, I think it's a good solid start. So another little look at one of the biomes, the starting one. It's much lusher and greener just in this instance before you get the grasshopper. Yeah, it does look good. Here it feels much like I am small in a garden. Just some of them other areas have seemed quite open and big and large. I mean, the map is meant to be huge. Kev told me in an interview that the, 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 the map would be massive. So I guess it's a case of using these creatures to get across the map as quickly as you can. And the game's very heavy on exploration. Kev does mention this interview about that's the, the main point of it is that you'll find little nooks, little sub biomes that you may not find if you're always just jumping about on your grasshopper and stuff. So you may have to get off if you really want to experience all that maybe small land has to offer. 
The trees, as I said, are going to be a big part of the game where you maybe be able to build and stuff. And yeah, I just love the look of this. Flying around, using the wings to get yourself from A to B is great. Like, it's nice. Obviously, I don't think you're going to be able to fly up, but it looks like it can just help you get across a little bit quicker. And you can see really the scale of the tree here as we kind of look up towards it. Looks like there is a base on top of the tree already. You can see all these little nooks and stuff. Uh, the trees look a bit fat. Like, I guess it's because we're so small, but they do look just a little bit. I'm guessing that's because it is like a, a oak tree or one of them ones from like Harry Potter where it does look like that. Trees do look like that, but I don't know. I kind of like a little bit more slenderness in my trees. I'm not fat shaming the trees, I promise. But you know what I mean? You don't want it to look stumpy. You don't want it to look a little short when, I guess, to me, trees, yeah, should be as tall as they can be, but a more variety, I guess, because we've seen just a lot of these fat, big, massive trees. And there we go, that's my first take watching this gameplay footage. As I said, I didn't really listen to all of the interviewer because I had to do this on the quick and I didn't record all of the voice work, but I did pop into the stream just a couple times to see what was going on. So go and check out the full stream with Kev. Like I said, I'm sure it might even pop up on their actual YouTube channel in the future. You'll find a link to their Discord in the comment section and yeah, go and check it out for yourself. I will be back with more Small Land news as soon as we get it and I'm looking forward to the open beta or the demo, I keep calling it open beta, but the actual demo in October that you'll be able to try for free. And yeah, I'll see you at bags later.